Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Wen Xu from Georgia Tech. Today, I will talk about our work designing new operating primitive to improve fuzzing performance. So re in recent years, fuzzing becomes really popular. So fuzzing is considered one of the most effective ways to finding security bugs in software. Uh, for example, uh, the very known fuzzer AFL has already found thousands of bugs in open source projects. And some similar fuzzers like LiveFuzzer also find a lot of bugs. So because of such kind of successful attempts, large companies and organizations like Google or Microsoft, they start to invest a lot of computing resources to do large scale fuzzing or cluster fuzzing. For example, Google announced the OSS first project um, which used clustered machines to find already find 2,000 bugs in 60 open source projects. Uh, meanwhile, Microsoft announced their cloud-based fuzzing, fuzzing tool to developers called Springfield to help developers find their bugs in their software. Exist existing research works try to improve fuzz from two, from two aspects. So the first thing is, and most of the research focuses on how to produce an input that is more likely to trigger vulnerability, or called fuzzing strategy. So existing works like combining fuzzing with symbolic execution, or introducing code-driven feedback, or even to improve the scheduling algorithm of fuzzing um, belonging to this scope. But our work tried to focus on another aspect, which is how to execute more inputs within a given time, or called fuzzing performance. As I mentioned before, because large companies invest a lot of computing resources, hardware resources for fuzzing, so it becomes meaningful to improve the fuzzing performance from the underlying operating system or infrastructure level um, <sighs> that can help save huge cost on computing resources in parallel fuzzing and note that we, we try to improve fuzzing performance regardless of the, in fact, the exact applied fuzzing strategies. So let's first look at how the state-of-the-art fuzzers uh, work on multiple course machines. In fact, we, we have an example of AFL. In fact, it has poor scalability when running on multi-core machines. Uh, here, we run AFL targeting libpng library on a 120 core machines. So two things. The first thing is that here we use the total executions of the fuzzer per second to evaluate the performance of fuzzer. Um, and the second thing is, uh, in fact, using, using so many coarse machines is try to project the future highly parallelized machine for fuzzing. Um, but in fact, you can see even running on AFL on the most popular two socket machines, which have like 45 cores to 60 cores, in fact, the performance is already dropping. Uh, here, the AFL drop, performance dropped at 30 cores and finally collapsed at 120 cores. Um, and that syncing executions, in fact, is about execute the target binary uh, to re-execute re the target binary with the input uh, synced from other fuzzer instance in the context of parallel fuzzing. Uh, as you can see, in fact, when there are more cores, there are more fuzzer instances, then more time and executions are spent on syncing the test case from other fuzzer instances instead, instead of doing real fuzzing executions to make progress. Um, so let's first look at the working mechanism of AFL and try to find out the bottlenecks. So for AFL, in fact, for a single AFL instance, it will try to repeat this fuzzing loop. First, it will read and mutate inputs from the disk, and then it try to launch the target application, feed the mutated input to it, and then during the execution, it will record the runtime coverage. Uh, finally, it will bootkeep the results if this result explore some new passes, or it is considered as an interesting test case. And in fact, AFL also natively supports parallel fuzzing. So when there are multiple AFL instances running on different cores, 
So periodically, there is a thinking phase in AFL. So it will scan the private direct working directories of other fathers. And then if it finds that there is an unseen test case in other fathers' working directory, it will try to execute it. If th it, this test case has some new uh, interesting code paths which the AFL itself has not been discovered, has not discovered, then it will copy this test case to its own directory for future fuzzing. We claim that working in such kind of way, AFL and also many other general fathers rely on a lot of OS primitives which are not scalable. That's how the bottlenecks come from. So the first thing is that fathers always need to launch the target application to test the new, newly generated input. So it will invoke fork. Secondly, it needs to read or write test cases on the disk. So it will involve typical disk, disk file system operations on small files. Because usually, when we're fuzzing, the test case is not large. And the third thing is that it needs to sync test cases from other further instances, which will involve two kind of operations. The first thing is to scan the working directory of other further instances. And the second thing is it needs to invoke fork to re-execute these test cases to see if they are interesting to itself. Let's go through them one by one. The first is the fork. Fork, in fact, is generally designed to duplicate the state of any running process on Linux. So in terms of fuzzing on multiple cores, fork will involve many redundant operations, such as it will duplicate virtual memory space. It will duplicate file sockets and credentials. But for fuzzing, every time we are launching an identical process image. So are these things really necessary? And the second is uh, the, the, more, the worst thing is that the forks also involve a lot of non-scalable operations, such as it will update the reverse mapping for, of physical pages, which is known to be unscalable. And also, it will stress the global memory allocator because they need to allocate a lot of new memory for this new process. Uh, the third thing is that because there is a new process created, so the scheduling cost is also introduced. The second thing is fathers need to manage test cases through the disk file system. So it will call open or create when generate test cases on the disk. And it also needs to call write because it needs to flush the interesting test cases to the disk for consistent storage. And in fact, these operations are considered creating, keep creating files in a private directory or writing small files in a private directory. These operations are considered non-scalable because they involve heavy modifications on the file system metadata in critical sections. The third thing, the third necessary step involved in a fuzzing loop is syncing test cases from other instances in the context of parallel fuzzing. The first thing is directory enumeration. So if there are more fuzzers and with, with the uh, progress of the fuzzing, there will be more number of test cases, then the time to perform this directory enumeration will non linearly increase. And the second thing is, when a fuzzer is enumerate others fathers working directory, it will interfere with the running that running fuzzer because directory read and write cannot be performed concurrently. And the second thing is re-executing the test cases generated from other fathers are considered redundant because the runtime run time coverage information of these test cases has already been achieved by other fathers. That's why we propose several solutions from the system level to solve these performance bottlenecks. So these operating primitives are general for any general application for this. The first thing is the snapshot system call, which is a lightweight scalable fork substitute for fuzzing. Um, in fact, it works in an intuitive way. We do not create process. We just use one process every time. And at the beginning, when there's a new input come, the snap, 
the father needs to call the snap system show call, and it will save the current memory and file information of the process, and it try to mutate the page table entries of all the writable pages to read only. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's known to be the copy on write technique. So during the fuzzing, there will be memory write to these pages, and these these behaviors will be caught by the page fault handler, and then we can do demand page copy of these modified pages. And after fuzzing, we simply need to recover the memory and file information, and also recover the copied page data. And finally, we also need to return in, return to the starting point, and then the fuzzer will uh, the target application will start wait for another incoming request from the fuzzer with the new input and that, that kind of routine keeps repeated. Compared with fork or some other process spawning operating primitives, snapshot system call do not have copies of new, numerous kernel data structures and different from fork or pthread create we do not need to allocate new stat area for the new process. And uh, we do not need to stress the kernel memory allocator. And uh, the more importantly, there's no process created every time, so there's no scheduling cost. So the, the second solution is the dual file system service. In fact, it is a two-level tiring of file systems ensuring both efficiency and deferred durability. Because we have an observation that neither the father instance nor the target application instance require strong consistency provided by the disk file system. Because even if there is a there is some error, there are some unexpected failures, uh, fuzzing, considering this kind of algorithm, the father can always reproduce the lost test cases. So we can somehow introduce memory file system for fuzzers to trade off between the consistent storage and the fuzzing performance. So here's an overview of our dual file system service. So in fact, fuzzer only interact with the, interact with the memory file system. We will allocate a partition temp folder for each fuzzer instance. And then if, because the memory file system is more efficient and scalable than the disk file system, and if the memory usage exceeds some threshold, we will move the test cases from the memory file system to the disk file system, for which has large capacity, and also ensure the durability. And then we will replace the original test case file in the memory file system with a symbolic link pointing to the, that actual test case on the disk. And more importantly, we will move the relatively elder test case to the disk because in terms of fuzzing, in fact, uh, most of the uh, elder test case will not be read out again by the fuzzers to do mutation because they have relatively smaller code coverage. And the third solution is we introduce a shared in-memory test case log for efficient collaborative fuzzing. So in fact, it is a queue. Every fuzzer owns a in memory test case queue, which will, which will be shared by all the parallel fuzzer instances. And then the test case, the, the, the fuzzer needs to maintain its queue. And every time when it finds an interesting test case, it needs to push the file information of the test case and also the corresponding coverage bitmap into the queue. And the other fuzzers can perform pop asynchronously by during the syncing phase. They simply uh, they need to maintain their own tail of this queue and then examine the test cases generated by this father. And uh, periodically, the owner of this queue will check all the tail values of other fuzzer instances and move the, its tail to a position which is equal or smaller than all the other tail values. So this kind of design will not have direct enumeration because uh, the other father instance only need to perform POP to examine test cases from neighbors. And also there's no test case execution because all the bitmap information are 
directly installed in the memory. So you only need to directly reference this bitmap to check whether this test case from another father instance is interesting to you or not. And finally, because it, is a, it has an asynchronous design, it's lock free, so there's no contention. Let's see the applicability of our techniques to, to these known state-of-the-art fathers. So in fact, most of the current fathers can benefit from our uh, operating primitives. Uh, there are some exceptions, like live father or home fathers. In fact, they have an in-process design, which means that they launch multiple threads to run multiple target instances at the same time. So that's why they don't suffer from fork. And uh, for some other fathers, traditional fathers, in fact, they, they, do not, they are not feedback driven. So a test case is interesting or not is simply based on whether it makes some crashes or not. So it's meaningless to mm, apply our in-memory test case log to, to them because online test case sharing is not so effective because their, their interesting test cases has a limited number, total number. So for all the other explanation of how these primitives being applied to these fathers can be seen in the paper. In fact, in the implementation part, we implement a new system called Snapshot and also a library for the fuzzer developer to call to utilize the shared in-memory test case log and also a dual file system service, service demo. And also, we applied our new primitives to AFL and also live fuzzer for evaluation. So the first thing is we, need, we want to see, we want to apply three of our primitive step by, one by one to AFL to see their, uh, their improvement on the performance. So first, we, see, we only apply shared test case log to AFL. Uh, we can see that at 45 cores, there will be 1.28 times faster. And then when it comes to 120 cores, um, our opt optimized AFL outperformed 13 times than the original AFL. Uh, but as you can see, in fact, the, the, uh, the op this, op this optimized version of AFL still suffers from the scalability issue. When there are more cores, the performance keeps dropping. And by using this shared test case log, the, the, time, of the time spent on syncing uh, largely decreased. So even on 120 cores, the time spent on syncing only involves nearly 8%. So now the scalability bottlenecks transfer to launching the new target application. So then we apply the snapshot system call to AFL. And we can see that then it has a really great improvement. Even at 45 cores, there will be a 12.6 um, times faster than the original AFL. And uh, we also compare the snapshot system call with some other general process spawning primitives provided by Linux. We can see that on 120 cores, in fact, snapshot system calls outperforms fork or pthread creates with nearly 3,000 times faster. And, but the scalability bottleneck still remain there. We can see when there are more cores, the performance still keep dropping. So finally, we need to apply our dual file system service to AFL. And uh, that's, the, that's the final result. And we can see if we use our partition temp interface with the back, um, backed up file system service, uh, the optimized AFL can perform 10 times faster uh, than the AFL which runs on simply HDD. And then when there are more cores, AFL start to scale. Um, after that, we also run our optimized AF version of AFL on nine uh, test suits collected from the o Google's OSS fuzzing project. And we can see at most time, the optimized version of AFL scale. It can have, so for a normal setting, like with 30 cores or 60 cores, it can have 7.7 .7 times faster and also 25.9 improvement. 
And on 100 technicals, there will be 28.9 improvement on performance in terms of the executions per second. Uh, in fact, the sum, for some test use, it is still the not scale uh, at, at uh, like 120 cores. That is because one reason may be the coverage already soon, like soon converge. And then there won't be many interesting test cases waiting to be executed. Another, re another reason is that now the scalability bottleneck transfer from the system level to the application itself, it may frequently invoke memory allocation and the allocations. That's also, that's also introduce performance bottlenecks, such as that boring SSL test suit. For live further, um, in fact, we choose six uh, test suits to evaluate our, our primitive, because live further cannot benefit from our snapshot, so, so we only apply two of our primitives to it. And uh, we can see that for some test suits like Bori SSL, Lefaza can have nearly over 700 performance improvement. But for some other, some other test suits, because they do not suffer a lot from uh, test case sharing or um, test case read writing. So they'll be like nearly one to two times faster for these test suits. So here's my conclusion. Current fuzzers are not at all scalable on modern operating systems with many core architectures, uh, which will be the future. And the underlying system components heavily relied on by the fuzzer degrades its scalability, uh, which the previous works failed to notice that. And we propose new operating primitives specialized, specialized for fuzzing, and we prove that these op operating primitives can largely improve the performance and scalability for the state-of-the-art fathers. So we will open source this project, and also this project is supported by Mozilla Research. So we will have a chance to apply these, our techniques to practical large-scale fuzzing in the future. Thanks for listening, and questions are welcome. Hi, I'm Billy from Android Security. Great work. Uh, question is, um, what are the challenges that you think for to, to apply this technique or the, the, the new uh, operating system primitives that are introduced to fast kernel uh, instead of fuzzing user space? Yeah, so in fact, this paper is targeting the general application fuzzers, so it's not. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. So the, the question is like, how, how difficult do you think it is to adopt this similar thing um, to FAS kernel? Um, I, I, I think I think I think the first thing that it really really depends on your the working model of your kernel fathers, and uh, I think I think these these techniques still. Can still be, how said, referred to or applied to kernel fathers because, uh, for example, like for, we can have some similar kind of snapshot system core when we are fuzzing kernel because we need to every time we need to somehow launch the kernel instance OS instances, right? And all right, and yeah. also, thank you. So um, nice work. I had uh, a question about the memory allocator bottleneck, um, which seemed to be kind of the, the next problem that you were running into, um, aside from you know running out of interesting test cases. So, um, do you think there are additional steps that you could take to address that bottleneck? You know, taking into account kind of the same general insight that uh, these are short-lived processes that um, you know you, you know will um, not live for very long. So for the for the potential memory allocating bottleneck. So you're talking about like what kind of thing we can do to improve it? 
Exactly. So you yeah, pointed so out in the maybe, case of boring SSL that uh, that seemed to be running into a yeah, yeah, allocator yeah. So problem, right? I, I think I think one of the solution in my mind may be to perform some more how's that more fine grained or contest aware snapshot, not simply doing snapshot at the beginning of the of the target instances. So maybe we can somehow doing some more in progress uh, snapshot. And then uh, try to avoid these kind of memory allocations repeatedly happen. Yeah, in each yeah. Hi, great work. This is Vince Hong from Alibaba. And have you checked your memory costs for your optimization compared to the original solution? Uh, in fact, we, we, we do not check that. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your work. So I have two questions. First, um, so you use the dual file system to um, address the bottleneck of file system, right? Disk yeah. file system. So have you tried the Temple FS? So it directly use the memory as the to to as the file system. Yeah. So have you tried that? Yeah, that's what we do. We use the memory file system. We will let the fathers directly working on the memory file system. Yeah. Oh, so you. I mean, do you implement a uh, your uh, uh, memory file system yourself, or or no, use? No, we um, just simply use. Command? We just simply use TempFS in our prototype. Okay, I see. Yeah. So another question is that so um you use a memory catalog to synchronize to synchronize um synchronize test cases, right? Yeah. So um it could reduce the time of synchronizing, but will it um increase the time of fuzzing time? Increase the fuzzing time since it, it involves when you uh, generate a new test case, it involves the push operation, right? Yeah. So, where it uh, increases the uh, fuzzing time? Um, yes, I think so. So, it will increase the it will increase the fuzzing time every time because there is a copy from. But 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 I I think I think it is better than. This this solution is better than having do not not having this because every time you need to only you need to uh, copy the bitmap one once when you find the interesting test cases right otherwise every time all the other father needs to re-execute this and find out the find out the corresponding coverage bitmap which may be much slower so it, I think it's a meaningful trade off so. Okay, I see. So thank you. Let's take the speaker one more time. Thank you.